Hey guys, my name is Poya Amelie and I'm one of the Neurocritical Care Fellows. I'm going to be talking to you today about status epilepticus. So before we can talk about status, first we need to talk about what's a seizure? And there are really two ways to answer this question, right? The first one is the pathophysiology of a seizure is basically just abnormal electrical activity in the brain. And so to illustrate this, kind of what happens, I want everybody to raise their right hand up in the air. And I want you to move your index finger like so. Now imagine that the neurons controlling your index finger suddenly gain the ability to control the surrounding cortex, such that your entire hand started to flex, and then your entire arm, and then your other arm, and then it basically spreads from there. And that's basically what happens during a seizure. That's what we worry about in patients with epilepsy. Clinically, the most common thing that people think about is rhythmic movements. And the way I know this is because every time somebody calls me for a consult, they're always like, oh, I swear their arm is moving rhythmically. Don't worry, I'm going to come see your patient, but I want you to know that seizures are actually a lot more than that. The symptoms of a seizure really just reflect the part of the brain that's seizing. So if it's in the frontal lobe, it could be something as simple as eye movement abnormalities. If it's in the temporal lobe, it could be aphasia or mutism. If it's in the occipital lobe, it could be weird kaleidoscope-like visual phenomenon. So knowing that, who among us can have a seizure? The correct answer is everybody, right? You can have a seizure, you can have a seizure, you can have a seizure. <laughs> Seriously, if I put your body under enough stress, every person in this room will seize. And we know that because we use ECT to treat patients with psychiatric disease, electroconvulsive therapy. And we know that different patients require different amounts of stimulus to induce their brain to have a seizure. So from that perspective, epilepsy is really just having a seizure threshold low enough that you actually cross it regularly. And 10% of us will cross our seizure threshold at some point in our life. So what lowers your seizure threshold? It's a lot of things that you guys are familiar with. The most common are drugs, antidepressants, antiarrhythmics, and antibiotics being the usual culprits. Metabolic disturbances, such as electrolyte abnormalities, hypo and hyperglycemia, malnutrition, and of course, sleep deprivation, the beloved Q1-hour neurocheck. And we can't forget about acute illness, right? Anytime you stress out the body's coping mechanisms, you're going to open the door for bad things to happen. So knowing that our patients are at very high risk of having seizure, I want to emphasize to you that early treatment and recognition are key. You can't treat it unless you know what it is. Status epilepticus is a seizure that lasts greater than five minutes. Some of you in this room might be old enough to remember that we used to say 30 minutes. Since then, us neurologists have kind of come to our senses and realized, yeah, we probably shouldn't be waiting that long. So it's greater than five minutes or multiple seizures without return to baseline in between. It further breaks down into convulsive and non-convulsive. Convulsive is the generalized tonic-clonic that everybody's used to thinking about. And non-convulsive basically looks like a coma. It often gets confused with brain death. And there are a lot of numbers here, but all I want you to take away from this is that early recognition and adequate treatment significantly affects your mortality. So knowing that, when should you suspect seizures in the ICU? There are really three circumstances, right? Your patient's way sleepier than you expect them to be. The patient's doing something weird and you really don't know why. Or the patient's actually awake enough to report to you an experience that you can't otherwise explain. So next week, you're going to be in your ICU, and you're going to be looking at one of your patients, and you're going to think, oh my gosh, I think this patient is having a seizure. So just like any other medical emergency, I want to refer you to my favorite quote from the House of God, which is, at a cardiac arrest, the first procedure is to take your own pulse. There's an algorithm, and it's really, really easy. So first, you give a benzodiazepine. Then you give an anti-epileptic, right? loading dose and maintenance dose. And then you call neurology or neurocritical care, who are going to help you figure out what you need to order and how to address why your patient is seizing. The most common pitfalls, people don't dose the drugs appropriately. Ativan should technically, technically be given at 0.1 milligrams per kilogram IV, split up into 4 milligram doses every 5 to 10 minutes. That means that a 75 kilogram adult is going to get 7.5 milligrams of Ativan which I know sounds super scary, but you got to get after it. Because intubating the patient is better than literally letting their brain fry from all of the seizures. Your AEDs are your real workhorses. These are the things that are actually going to make a big difference. If you're confident enough to give phosphenitoin or valproate, I'm 
confident, I am confident that you're going to give the correct dose. Keppra is where people run into a lot of issues, and that's because the most recent data on Keppra suggests that in order to treat status epilepticus, you should be giving 60 milligrams per kilogram, up to 4.25 gram. That means that a 75 kilogram adult should get the max dose every single time. So let's say you've done all that and it didn't work. Don't worry. This is where you sedate the patient. It's most commonly done with uh, propofol or Versed, but there's more recent evidence suggesting that ketamine might also be effective. And you just titrate it to cessation of seizure or burst suppression. And that's it. So your take home messages are, if it doesn't make sense, think about seizures. You should have a low threshold to call neurology or at least order an EEG. And if you have a high suspicion for seizure, clinically or electrographically, treat it as soon as possible. Use your algorithm. Dose your benzos and AEDs appropriately. Use sedation if you need to. And call neurology to help you work out and figure out why your patient is seizing in the first place. For more information, you can point your phone at this and it should download the Neurocritical Care Society guidelines for you. Thank you.